Hi guys, welcome to the Art Server. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to remove the BIOS ROM from an LSI HBA card. Although I personally like to have the ROM program available on my HBA cards, I know many of you prefer to remove it to speed up post time during boot up. Additionally, I've worked with some customers who have motherboards that conflict with the BIOS ROM program and that prevents the system from booting. So in situations like that, one way to work around the problem is to remove the BIOS ROM, especially if you don't need it. So those are a couple of reasons why you might want to do this. Now, I see mentions online that in order to remove the BIOS ROM, you need to erase the entire flash first and then reflash the firmware without flashing the BIOS ROM. Here are a few examples I found on the internet. These are basically screenshots from various online forums and, and whatnot. So the first one says, you only need to erase the card first with the usual SAS to flash dash O dash E6, then simply omit dash B option for the BIOS during flashing process. And the second one says, I can erase the flash for the whole card again, except I won't, I wouldn't put MPT BIOS on it as part of the procedure. So basically these are uh, people asking for help uh, or helping somebody else um, figure out how to remove the BIOS ROM. And there are many ways to do this, but one of the most frequent suggestions is to basically erase the entire flash, then reflash the firmware, and omit the step where you flash the BIOS ROM. Well, what I want to show you today is a simpler and shorter method of erasing the BIOS ROM. Now, there are several methods to accomplish the same thing, and erasing the entire flash and reflashing the firmware without the BIOS ROM is certainly one way to accomplish that. And I actually used to do that myself. There's also a way to do it by booting free DOS and using the DOS version of the SAS to flash utility, which has the ability to erase specific regions of the flash. However, I've since discovered an easier way that I want to share with you guys today. For those of you using Linux or Unraid, the method I'm going to show you today doesn't even require a reboot. Now, unfortunately for FreeBSD or FreeNAS people, the program I will use today will not work. So you'll have to boot a live Linux distro to use this method. Okay, so let's get right into it. The program I'm going to use today is called LSIUtil, and there are various versions of this you can find on the internet. But the latest version I found was version 1.72, so I recommend you try to find that version. It does require you to compile the code to produce an executable program, but if you're not comfortable with that, I've compiled a statically linked version and made it available on my website, which I will leave a link in the description for you to download. So as you can see here, this is the uh, URL to uh, my website where you can download the LSI util. Okay, so let's get started. Let me pull up this terminal here. So you can see here I'm logged in to my server that has a SAS 2008 HBA card and if I run the SAS to flash program with dash list you will see that this card has a BIOS ROM and UEFI ROM uh, of this particular version flashed on it. And so our goal today is to basically erase this. So to accomplish this uh, the program I'm going to use is called LSI Util, and the first thing you want to do is to run LSI Util with uh, the dash S option. This will give you a listing of all the LSI controllers that the program can detect on your system. Of course, in my case, I've only got one, so you'll see that it says one MPT port found. If you have multiple controllers, this will uh, be greater than one and below you will see a listing of them. So IOC0, this is basically the first uh, LSI controller that it found. Now, the reason for running this uh, dash S option first is to figure out what your so-called port number is. And the port numbers start with one and increment uh, sequentially. And so if I want to modify IOC0, this card, which is the only card on my system, the port number is basically one. If you have multiple cards, say IOC three, for example, the port number would be four. Okay, so um, once you know the port number, you run LSI util dash P followed by the port number, in my case one, and then dash E, then the number four. 
And so this gets you into a special menu into in the LSI Util program that allows you to manip manipulate the BIOS ROM uh, section. So I'll go ahead and uh, hit enter here. Now it's asking me for the BIOS ROM file name. Now of course in our case we're actually trying to erase. And so in order to accomplish that you basically enter an empty file name. And it's going to ask you do you want to preserve the current BIOS? because it's already detected that there's a BIOS on the card. And so this is where we will say no, and that's what's going to trigger the erase. All right, it's going to ask for the F code file name. We'll again hit uh, enter with an empty uh, file name. And similarly, uh, we're going to enter an empty file name for the EFI BIOS. And again, because there is a UEFI ROM on this card, it's asking me, do I want to preserve the current one? And I will say no. And that will trigger the erase of that as well. And finally, it's going to ask you if you want to actually continue with the selected uh, options here. And so I will say yes. And although it's saying downloading image, it's actually doing an erase based on the input that we just provided. Now I'll show you that that actually took effect by running the dash list again. And as you can see, the BIOS ROM and UEFI uh, version are now listed as NA or not available. All right, so that's the easiest way that I've found to remove the BIOS ROM and the UEFI ROM if you wanted to erase that as well. It doesn't require a reboot if you are on Linux, you just simply download this program either from me or from the internet and compile it yourself and you can erase the BIOS ROM just like that. Now, before I end today's video, I just want to mention that removing the BIOS ROM does speed up post uh, time during boot up, but there are a few features that you will no longer have. Among them, the most important one is you can no longer boot off a device connected to your LSI HPA. This might be just fine if you're using it only to connect data drives. Secondly, for troubleshooting purposes, I find that the SAST Apology view in the BIOS ROM program to be very useful. So without the ROM, you will no longer have this. And finally, there are also drive spin-up timings and other parameters you can adjust in the ROM program that will no longer be available. So if you choose to remove the BIOS ROM, please keep these things in mind. Alright folks, so that's it for today. I hope you find this video useful should you ever need to remove the BIOS ROM from your LSI card. If you like this video, be sure to give me a like, and if you'd like to see more how-to videos from me, be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.